Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. That is Jack. I'm Conrad. This is the 45 with a special edition, the European Stupid League. Uh, so clearly we are burying, and I guess we're not really burying the lead. You know what we think about this purported European Super League that actually has been announced. We've got 12 founding clubs, AC Milan, Arsenal, Atletico Madrid, Barcelona, Chelsea, Inter Milan, Juventus, Liverpool, Manchester City, Manchester United, Real Madrid, Spurs. This is a terrible idea on many, many, many levels. And the soccer world, the football world, seems to be united in hatred oh of this God. thing. It's beautiful, honestly. It's um, people will not, remember not this the, day. Not the league, but yeah, the, yeah. the anger, the, the, the joint, the, the togetherness that we feel today is beautiful. I mean, the there, you see United fans and Liverpool fans who usually would be scrapping it out, hating each other. They're, <laughs> hand they're, in hand, they're hand in hand in hatred of this idea. They're like, "Wow, we hate the Glazers. We hate John Henry. We hate the owners of these clubs." Man, it, this is just brutal. Um, I as, as Americans. There's been a lot of talk about this is the Americanization of European sport. And I mean, they're not really wrong, right? This is like the NFL, the NBA, a closed circuit league, just trying to guarantee money for these clubs because the pandemic can kind of force them like, oh, yeah, these are not infallible entities. They can. But they've been talking flaws. about this for a lot longer than just American ownership in, in mm-hmm. British soccer. And I, and I think that soccer. that accelerated the talks. The pandemic accelerated the talks. And here we have this actually happening. I still am of the opinion that this is a bargaining tactic, and I hope that it is because it would be beyond stupid if this is actually something that happens because in that group of 12 super teams, you have two teams that have never won the competition that they're part of that it's potentially replacing. Spurs and Arsenal have never won the Champions League. Athletic have won the Champions League. Man City have never won the Champions League. Four teams. This would potentially replace the Champions League. They're not even super I don't think it's going to replace the Champions League. UEFA is not going to let that happen. Here's the issue, though, is because it's, it's not an open competition. That's the that's the thing about the Champions League. It's an open competition. This you've got twelve founding clubs, three to be named, and then five qualifiers. That's mm-hmm. sorry. Go ahead. It's the with the intention of just keeping things. There's no competition. You could finish bottom of your group, and you'll be there next year. Doesn't matter what happens. Or you could get kicked out of your league and be in there. Exactly. Like what we're looking at is we're not going to hit on the the dominoes to fall with if they're going to play in the Champions League, still the Premier League, still all their domestic leagues, because that's still yet to be determined. That's going to be determined tomorrow um, when we're recording this in a in a UEFA meeting. But it's just there's no competition. It's you can't even call it a league. It's just it's like the ICC in America, the International Champions Cup, Cup right? When it was yeah. just these big clubs came to America. And just played in, in like Ann Arbor. They played in played Texas. their B teams, not even their they A went, teams. They played their, their B teams, and they won the ICC trophy. Yeah, we won the ICC trophy. But nobody there ever were, actually did there that. There were no implications. It was just to get American fans to watch. And this is for foreign fans. Let's be honest. This is just a, a, the middle finger to the local fans. Well, I think that here's here's the one of the fundamental problems that that I can't get beyond is you have 20 teams in the premier league right and six of them now will be competing in this competition and they will be the sole recipients of any revenue derived from that competition as at least as it relates to uh the premier league right so and it's not just revenue, those six by the way. clubs it's three and a half billion euros per club oh it's, a, per it's club. yeah yeah it's a, it's an enormous amount of over what period of time though it's not that's not seasonal yeah i mean that's that's over like a, some period of time we're reacting in the moment, which is a terrible thing to do. Usually you want to take time to reflect, but we're going to react because this is so stupid. It's the, I think it, you can't get beyond this, the pure money grab of it. So what I'm curious about is what do UEFA do? What does FIFA do? What does the FA do? Because the only way you can counterattack a money grab is to make that money less usable. So let's say that the financial fair play... Let's say Man City makes 100 million euro, 100 million pounds, whatever denomination you want to use in a given year from this competition. Okay, their financial fair play number is going to be dropped by 100 million, right? So then all of a sudden they have that much less money to spend. And then at the same time, the Premier League can say, okay, any money that comes from a non-qualified competition, meaning Capital One Cup, FA Cup, uh, Champions League, Europa League, any of these other things, even the lower level cups that, that the, the League One, League Two teams play in. The Papa John's if you're, trophy. If, 
if you've got money coming in from something outside of that, you can't use it for transfers. You can't use it for staff. You can't use it for grounds. You can't use it for anything to enrich the, the actual product that goes on the field. That's what's going to happen. This is going to get ugly. I don't know if it's actually going to go forward. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps it is a bargaining tactic. But I think those are some of the levers that the FA, the U at UEFA, and FIFA have to go after is purely, okay, you're going to make all that money? Great. You can't use it to improve your club. Yeah. You know, I think that would be a great transition point because I think a lot of the sticking point a lot of fans have with this is that you'd be leaving the Premier League, leaving the Champions League because you'd be banned from it. Um, I think the Premier League would lose so much money from banning these clubs. It'd be unbelievable for them to ban them. It'd be unprecedented. Um it would be an interesting middle ground almost. You say, all right, guys, you can make this money, but you can't use it uh, to, to build yourselves here. Is it is it enforceable? That's what I, I would no do. I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, but it, it seems like that's the, the only way that this could possibly go forward because is the European Super League inevitable? I think it might be because as much as the fans will be angry, and I mean they are angry. I have, We mentioned it. We have not seen fans as unified on Twitter ever. Um, and yet it's not going to do much because Joel Glazer – John Henry, Stan Kroenke, um, all the owners of all these clubs, Florentino Perez, who is going to be the, the president of this Super League, they have all the power. Those 12 presidents, CEOs of these clubs literally control all of European football, and it's unbelievable. I don't know that I... I think they're going to find out that they don't control it quite as much as they think they do if there is that much of an uprising, not just by the governing bodies, the FA, specifically for England and UEFA and FIFA, but if every football fan out there is like, yeah, nah, man, this is a bad look because Norwich just won promotion this weekend to the Premier League, right? They're ecstatic. They're going to get, hey, we're getting a buttload of money to come up because of this TV deal. And all of a sudden, you're going to kick them in the teeth by saying, oh, yeah, and you're now not just, not only you are at a disadvantage because you can't spend at the level that a City, a Liverpool, or a Chelsea, or these other clubs do, but they now have an additional, we're using $100 million per season as a, as a starting number. I don't and actually know what the number is going to be. And so that, what's the yeah. – that just destroys the fabric of the fan, the, the supporter experience, right? Because – what, what do you do? It, I think it erodes the economy of the game and it erodes just the overall fan experience of the game. It's like you oh. just, you know you don't have a shot. It is now, it, it was already an uneven playing field in a lot of ways, and now it is 10 times worse. Oh goodness. my God. It's, it's on, yeah. It's just depressing, honestly. Um, I mean, we've, we've talked about this at length outside of this video as well, that it's just, this just isn't, isn't the soul is gone almost. Um, I, I really just have no idea what, what what could possibly be a benefit from this. I believe you said it when we were talking on the phone earlier. It's like there's only money. is only pop, like pro here. There's no other pros anywhere else. It's just cons everywhere. It's just an insult to the game, honestly. I mean, there's been, what, 140 years of top flight football in England, of these clubs with their history, with their legacy, all of it goes out of the window. The disrespect to the other clubs who have tried to build themselves up, to the Norwiches of the world. They just are saying that we believe we're more important than you and we don't want to play on the same playing field as you. We don't want any risks. We don't want to have to... They don't want these matches to be played with stakes. They want the money aspect to be taken away and it's just the goals that matter. Eh, I'm just angry. No, it's idiotic. I, so what are they... They're already talking about the players that participate. They're not going to be able to participate in the World Cup. That's a big deal, right? I think you're going to see players... Are they going to be strong enough to boycott these competitions, even though it's not going to... I mean, we're talking about... They're starting in, potentially in August, and if they can't play in the World Cup 2022 in Qatar, interesting. Obviously, we've talked about UEFA and the FA not liking this. They're also talking about kicking those teams out of the Champions League this year, which means PSG wins. And guess what? PSG would love to be one of those question marks, right? For sure. Actually, I would have to I, imagine that they're going to be I, one of them. There's been a lot of rumors that um, this is completely unfounded, but it's um, obviously uh, there's a, lot, a strong Qatar connection with PSG. Um, I believe their owner is on the board, if not the president of UEFA. So there's a strong connection between FIFA, Qatar, and UEFA, PSG. Oh, yeah, it's dirty. So they, sure. don't want, they don't want to. And I think there's also lost in this is that UEFA and FIFA almost wiped themselves clean in comparison to these clubs who are just 
unbelievably dirty looking. They're not clean either. Um, they have a lot of problems, a lot of corruption issues in, in football. Um, but I, I, I have no idea what's going to happen. I cannot imagine us doing a Premier League preview predictions next season without the Manchester's, without Liverpool, without three of the London teams. There are so many other great clubs in England, and I think we would still watch the Premier League even if these clubs left. But what about the average fan? I mean, the average American fan especially. I talked to other Americans. I see almost nobody who supports a non-Big Six club. It's just going to kill the Premier League and the, the drop-down effect. I mean, you look, look at the, the other jerseys Wolves. in that room. Wolves. We are huge fans of all of these other smaller – and it's, to call them small is an insult – they're not small. They're gargantuan the institutions. Shirt and a they're, Swans shirt. They're being insulted. There's and a there's U.S. N- men's national team shirt. They're a small and club. The biggest thing is it is no longer a meritocracy. There is no competitive mm-hmm. aspect. Arsenal could finish tenth in one in the in one ten group ten ten team. That would group. never happen. Spurs could happen. finish tenth in one other ten team group. They could be nineteenth and eighteenth. They could be the two worst teams in the competition, but because they were the founders. They're a super team. They get to stay around. It's a joke. It's not a sport. Well, that, that's, it's not interesting. A that's interesting. That's interesting because somebody has to be the the loser in all of if this. If those going to be teams, at the, but some, I guess that's why they're there. They're the they're the <laughs> fodder for the bottom of the table. <laughs> I uh, I don't know. All right, uh, I, this is a, this make both of us are angry, right? We've been firing off text messages since this thing started up this morning. This has been we've had this conversation now for a couple of years because this it every year or so it seems like it 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 fires back up but now with this formal announcement mm-hmm. i wish it were april 1st and this was a joke but it doesn't seem like it's a joke no yeah but uh you ought to subscribe for more like this uh and see where this goes you know every Anything like that- in this video is one extra effort towards ending the european super league one extra subscribe helps us get one step closer <laughs> love it Jack Conrad, this has been the Footy Five with a European stupid league uh, commentary. I don't know what else you could call this, uh, but please do look for us on the Twitter at the Footy Five. Like, subscribe, let us know what you think in the comments. Take care now.